Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is Dakin West reaction. And this is the final product which we are going to prepare using this re name reaction. And we shall discuss mainly the basic concept mechanism and one MCQ. And this is very important because it's, it's one of the precursor for oxazole preparation which is a 5 member heterocyclic compound. Now, before going to the details, one MCQ in front of you. I request you student, please pause the video, try by yourself and write your answer in the comment box. Don't hesitate because self-evaluation is essential for improvement. So, please try. Now, let's come to the main topic that is Dakin West reaction. So, this is you can consider this is the final product which you can consider it's an analogous of 1,4-dicarbonyl compound. This There is a difference because this is an NH group but it's analogous you may consider and this 1,4 dicarbonyl compounds could be useful for 5 member heterocyclic compound preparation you can see here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 and in presence of proper condition and removal of one molecule of water it will ultimately result this 5 member heterocyclic compound and these are very important compounds. I have already discussed a dedicated lecture on this purpose. So, please visit for better understanding if you have any doubt. Now, so let us come back to the our today's main topic that is Dakin West oxidation. The Dakin West oxidation, sorry, Dakin West reaction. So, the Dakin West reaction is a chemical reaction that transforms the amino acid into a keto amide using acid anhydride and a base. Typically, pyridine. With pyridine as a base and solvent, refluxing condition are required, but with addition of 4 dimethyl aminopyridine or DMAP, so DMAP structure is so this dimethyl aminopyridine, this thing. So, in presence of this DMAP as a catalyst, reaction takes place at room temperature. So, from this statement, you can understand how much milder reaction condition is enough to prepare the final product from easily available material that is amino acid and this is anhydride. And by the way, it does not matter whether this amino acid is in means enantio pure or racemic, it does not matter at all. Why you will understand after some time during the mechanism study. Now, in this way, as I have done in the beginning, the mistake, and I request you please do not make any, do not get confused about this Dakin West reaction versus Dakin oxidation or Dakin reaction. Both are different. Dakin oxidation is a conversion of a electron rich aldehyde to corresponding phenolic derivative. So, if you have any doubt about Dakin reaction, you may visit the dedicated lecture uploaded in my channel. Now, let us come to the mechanism. So, what happens? First, this amino acid is taken. Amino acid reacts with as acetic anhydride means you may consider it an anhydride acid anhydride how it attacks here it opens up it come back and ultimately it produces this and it resulted in in acyl amino acid so this first step is acylation of amine and in this case student if there is some base in the medium this step is favored because see in the first step there was NH2 and after that there is NH. So, after the nucleophilic attack means here nitrogen need to remove or eliminate one proton and this proton elimination became more easier if there is a base present because after the nucleophilic attack the nitrogen got one positive charge. Now, fine. We understood this. Now, in the next slide what happened in presence of excess anhydride this carboxyl acid group produces mixed anhydride. How? So, this is actually an equilibration reaction. So, these attacks here, it opens up, it comes back and this leaves. Question, what is the advantage of mixed anhydride formation? Why? You will understand after some time. If you do not, means if this acid mixed anhydride does not produce, then there will be problem because OH is not actually a good reviving group. But after anhydride formation, this is actually a carboxylate this is a relatively better living group. So, in the next step what happens? This nitrogen lone pair pushes here and this oxygen became electron rich. What do I mean by the statement? See, this is actually a keto. 
and this is a amine so what happens this lone pair of amine could be donated here and it can come so you can have an another canonical form that is r c single bond o minus double bond n h2 having plus so from this canonical um, form you can understand the carbonyl oxygen is significantly electron rich so that's how that's why the nucleophilic attack could be obtained from the carbonyl oxygen and you can see that thing here means after this opening these lone pair these attacks this carbonyl again so after that it opens up again come back and then these carboxylate leaves so consequently how many number of rings are produced always student remember when there is a ring formation please follow the counting for example 1 2 nitrogen 3 carbonyl 4 and oxygen is 5 and so 5 member ring fine now 1 is carbonyl 2 is obviously this r1 attached okay fine 3 is nitrogen so this is 2 this is 3 4 carbon and 5 is oxygen so this is now in the next step what happens see there is the role of base again so what this base does this base abstract the proton okay so if you take relatively means stronger base then reaction will be smooth for example pyridine versus dimethyl aminopyridine because if you look at this dimethyl aminopyridine these lone pair of nitrogen could be given here it can come here and it can come here so from this thing you can understand that the electron density on this pyridine nitrogen which is acting as a base is more compared to the simple pyridine molecule itself okay so this we understood in the second step this base and it will abstract after this abstraction what it will be produced it will produce this carbon ion derivative and this carbon ion is resonance stabilized what do i mean this charge can come here and it can open so it will produce this derivative so fine now in the next step there is carbon ion and in the reaction medium there is still anhydride so it can react with the anhydride it can act as a nucleophile and attack this anhydride carbon so it will open up it will come back and again carboxylate will leave so in this way this will produce this ring compound now this is not the air student i know it's a little longer but you need to understand so then carboxylate can also act as nucleophile it's a mild nucleophile but it can act so what happened it can attack this carbonyl carbon no, sorry this a star carbonyl you can consider so it can open up come back and it will open up so in this way this the, uh, this product seven will be produced now question how this part became this amide it was imine alcohol ester derivative was like that see remember student this carbon oxygen bond means c double bond o is relatively more stable compared to c means if you check so in this case that's why this tautomerization so this is actually a tautomerization type reaction so that's how it happens now and second thing this uh, means you this in the derivative if you look at so what happens it it has one side this anhydride fine another side amide fine and another side there is carbonyl now question which side is maximum active for nucleophilic attack obviously student anhydride because addition on carbonyl or amide both are reversible but nucleophilic attack on anhydride or better you may consider mixed anhydride is means it 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 is irreversible as it's more facile so what happened in this step so nucleophile will attack here it will open up and cleave and it will come here so in this way this will produce one means this compound where one side is this amide is intact another side carbonyl is intact and another side there is hydroxyl why hydroxyl it is expected that it will be o minus but after so in the from the solvent it can in reaction medium it can abstract the proton and it can form this oh now if you look at this molecule little closely so this is a carboxylic acid fine no problem this is alpha this is beta so this is nothing but beta keto acid 
and we know under we know that beta keto acid undergo facile decarboxylation in presence of slight amount of heat okay so this is a entropically favorable phenomena i have already discussed in a dedicated lecture you may visit for better understanding now so we understood that this carboxylic acid will undergo decarboxylation means here my co2 will be eliminated and this hydrogen you can expect that it will be shifted from here so this is the r1 attached to this amide one side and another side is carbonyl and where is the hydrogen student there is the hydrogen now if you look at this molecule this is a 1,4 dicarbonyl type where only exception is this and it is produced so in this way the final product is produced now what is the application as i told it's useful for oxazole preparation what happens these this reacts means actually it undergo dehydration and ultimately is produced this molecule oxazole for a pretty uh, easier understanding you can consider one oxygen from here and two hydrogen from either here and here so this three eliminates as water okay and in this case please remember this molecule is aromatic so that's the driving force so this will result in this uh, oxazole preparation i shall discuss about this method in the subsequent video so from this thing we can understand we can prepare oxazole from this method now in conclusion what you have learned acidic anhydride is actually a good electrophilic reagent and primary amine is a relatively good nucleophile and 1,4 dicarbonyl compounds undergo dehydration followed by and cyclization resulting 5 member heterocyclic compound now amide oxygen is more electron rich than keto oxygen why i have explained the resonance aromaticity is a driving force for this oxazole preparation or this heterocyclic compound preparation and another most important thing racemic amino acid could easily be used as synthon for this reaction now let's come to our mcq so what is the product actually student it's a difficult problem i agree so the answer of this question is option d now question how let's see the mechanism so what happened n methyl imidazole is given so we know imidazoles are significantly higher nucleophile so these lone pair on this nitrogen of n methyl imidazole will attack here it will open up come back and it will leave so in this way it will produce this carboxylate or you may consider in this case acetate since acetic anhydride is taken and along with that this imidazole derivative of you may consider this carbonyl or you can consider it's an activated amide type carbon nitrogen bond is there but still it's a good living group now we shall and discuss that thing later on and by the way there is a concept nucleophilic catalysis nucleophilic catalyst for ester hydrolysis you may visit for better understanding about this concept now in the next step so previously there was a carboxylic acid so in presence of acidic anhydride it can produce a mixed anhydride so this is the mixed anhydride now in the next step so in the next step this mixed anhydride can undergo means you may consider enolization now question may come why so if you look at the structure of this molecule this is this 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 is the enol so this and here o o o now as i told that this carboxyl mean this a carboxylate can act as a base and base such that enolization became super so it became enolate type derivative which you can see here so from enol to enolate now in the next phase these enolate can act as a nucleophile by the way why this enolate is produced what is the specific thing see this molecule is completely conjugated right now this benzene with this carbonyl with oxygen with carbonyl so it's an extended conjugation and we know conjugation means stabilization so that's the driving force for this in enolate preparation conjugation increases so it can act as a nucleophile nucleophile from carbon side because carbon is more softer and what it does these negative charge will attack here and after that it will open up come back and it will leave question why these leaves because it's it is a neutral molecule means imidazole so in this way okay first this addition in the second this leaves 
So after leaving what it produces in this way it produces this is the pH these this is the carbonyl uh, here this is it is actually a mix anhydride this part and other part that is this is CH3 fine. Now next step is the workup. So workup means anhydride we know that anhydride undergo this hydrolysis to produce the corresponding acid. So what it will produce this is pH double bond O OH and here there is a ketomethyl. Now if you look at this molecule this is also a alpha beta keto acid and we know beta keto acid undergo facile decarboxylation. So after facile decarboxylation what it will result? It will result this PA you can see this P corner this is this is the product ok means the option D is the product. Now if such question given in your exam I suggest you student these are tricky question. So it is better to go step wise and if you think that you do not have enough time it is better to skip such question and try some easier if you have otherwise you may go through and best way is learn as much as possible. So this is the end of the discussion thanks for watching if you consider my channel worthy means my content then please help this channel to grow and if possible please visit my another channel climate and chemistry where I upload global warming and climate change related videos. Stay happy, stay blessed, see you in my next video. Bye bye.